China has adopted a decision on thoroughly banning the illegal trading of wildlife and eliminating the bad habits of eating wild animals. The Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, China's top legislature, said on Monday the move lays the groundwork for amending China's wildlife protection law. The trade of wild animals for medicine, pets and scientific research will be subject to strict approval and quarantine procedures. Although scientists have yet to discover the exact origin of, co of the COVID-19, it's believed to have come from a wildlife market in Wuhan, central China. So how will the new ban work and how significant is such a ban on what has been a rather good business for many people in China? I'm joined from Houston by Peter J. Lee, China policy specialist from the Humane Society International and in Tianjin via Skype by Bai Xian Yue, managing partner partner at the Grandal Law Firm. Gentlemen, welcome to The Point. So, um, Monday, so we had this new decision uh, by the top legislature of, China's, uh, of, of China, which is a comprehensive ban on the eating of wild animals. And uh, also, it's supposed to be a rather permanent uh, decision. It's not a law yet, although it's not a law, it's, it's a comprehensive decision. But we've had something like a temporary ban, which was announced at the end of January uh, on, the, on the banning of the illegal trade of wildlife. So, Mr. Lee, what difference or what does this new decision yes. do on top of what was announced at the end of January? I would say this is a major breakthrough in China's policy towards wildlife uh, farming and wildlife trade for uh, the food market. Now, uh, one month ago, uh, the, the, the ban was at the administrative level. Now, this, let's, this you know, National People's Congress decision has elevated uh, the, uh, the, uh, the ban from administrative level to the level of a national uh, legislature. It's a major breakthrough. Uh, and I believe that uh, uh, the, the uh, comprehensive ban on all aspects of uh, the trade, including you know, uh, breeding, uh, trade, uh, transport, uh, transportation, and uh, marketing, uh, and covers a comprehensive you know, a list of uh, uh, species that has been you know, used for the uh, food market. So the significance is tremendous. It will be good for uh, fighting the disease and good for conservation, good for preventing future uh, outbreaks and also for China's reputation. And I, see, I, I think that uh, the action is highly commendable. Absolutely. Well, I have to emphasize, and it's, I think it is necessary to point out that not all Chinese people eat wildlife. Actually, only a small, I would say only a small portion of the Chinese population are curious about these exotic meats. Personally, I don't eat it. Many of my team members are actually vegetarians, so the great majority of Chinese people don't eat everything that moves. I think that stereotype has to be busted. And yet, uh, after the SARS outbreak in yes. 2000 and 2003, which was confirmed to have come from civic cats. Now, there, was, there were also bans, right? There were also action taken on wildlife trading or wildlife uh, consumption, I believe. Um, Mr. Bai, what would be the difference between this time and last time? Why can we expect that this ban will really make a difference? Uh, well, the, the purpose of this ban is definitely uh, a result of the a devastating, devastating effect of this coronavirus has had on China, as well as on the rest of the world. It has been spreading very fast, and it has been a, a, a deadly uh, disease, and now a international pandemic already, uh, which uh, really looks scary to the general public as well as to the rest of the world. Uh, in terms of uh, why we, you know, the lessons we sh we, we should have learned from SARS. Uh, I think this has been a question that has been repeatedly asked by many Chinese as well as uh, people from other countries. Uh, I, I think if you look at the measures uh, China has taken so far uh, in the fight, fight against the coronavirus, has been really inc uh, re impressive. Uh, I think many of the measures uh, really mobilized the whole nation, and China basically has uh, used it whatever resources it can to uh, attack and control this, uh, the spread of this coronavirus. Uh, but apparently, uh, you, can, you can tell that 
you know, in terms of medical uh, equipment, in terms of the... Uh, but what uh, about wildlife? Uh, Let, let's cut straight to the point. I'm, uh, we're talking about uh, protection of wildlife. How much more aggressive yeah. or how much more effective, Mr. Bai, do you think this new action, this new measure by the national legislature, top legislature, will be compared to what happened after SARS? Well, it has definitely strengthened the uh, liability as well as uh, uh, in, in, in administrative measures in, 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 in uh, banning some of the consumption of wild animals. Uh, the uh, punishment is much more uh, stringent and uh, definitely much more uh, detailed measures will be rolled out very soon. Okay, do we know the details the by now? Do we know the details of punishment no. by now, Mr. Bai? We do, uh, like the... Uh, Give an uh, example, the, please. The fine. Yeah, for example, like the fine or certain consumption or, uh, or uh, poaching or trading of some of the wild animals that, and the protection will be increased in 2010 at, at least. Some of them are 10, 24. So the punishment is much more okay. severe and All the right. consequences are much more serious. Okay. According to the decision, the consumption of uh, terrestrial wild animals of important ecological, scientific and social value that are under state protection, as well as other terrestrial wild animals, including those that are bred or reared in captivity, shall be thoroughly prohibited. Uh, Mr. Lee, is this clear to you? Because there seem to be different... Uh, definition of wild animals. Very clear, chicken or, or, or cow or sheep, they are not, you know, that are domesticated, are not considered wild animals. But pets, for instance, dogs, cats, mules, horses, will they be under protection according to this new ban? Do you know? Yeah, I, I believe so, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, and also not only so, I, have to, I want to emphasize the fact that the, uh, this uh, new decision. Uh, focus on the word comprehensive. So comprehensive ban uh, not only include uh, those, you know, uh, animals which you had just mentioned, the so-called three, you know, categories of uh, valuable, uh, you know, animal species, but also all the species in the wild are not, you know, under state protection. So, uh, so the comprehensive nature of this ban, you know, suggests that the uh, Chinese authorities have taken into consideration uh, the, uh, you know, the, the devastation of this particular uh, epidemic has caused the entire nation. Mm -hmm. As President Xi Jinping said a few days ago, that China has encountered the biggest uh, public si uh, health crisis since the founding of People's Republic of China. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this particular unit decision has laid the groundwork for the revision of China's wildlife protection law. Okay. And I believe that, uh, uh, I hope that uh, the, uh, the ban could be extended to others, uh, other categories of farmed animals. Mm. Mr. Bai, the decision also stipulates that the use of wild animals for non-edible purposes, including scientific research, medical use and display, shall be subject to strict examination, approval and quarantine procedures following relevant regulations. So some wild uh, wild animal parts like uh, pangolin scales or rhino horn have been used in traditional Chinese medicine. So how will such ingredients, such animals um, be protected under the new regulation? What will be done to protect their rights better? I think it has been always uh, illegal to trade the poach those wild uh, uh, animals which are under a strict protection uh, law uh, in, in China. That it really comes down to enforcement and implementation of these stringent new measures that have been intro recently introduced. Uh, uh, apparently, the local authorities, you know, both the local and at the central uh, government, uh, particularly the, some of the you know administrative uh, agencies of the local government, I, I think they have always been uh, faced with the challenge of uh, being understaffed. I mean, like found, mm. uh, and uh, also the general public needs more education. And it takes a whole package of different things to really uh, cope with this effectively in, in the future. Yeah. Well, effective is a key issue. Actually, Mr. Lee, uh, last time you were on the show, you said China has a huge shortage for regulation resources. Um, how do you see the challenges imposed yes. by this comprehensive ban? You really have to have the, the manpower to implement such a ban. And also, when you ban something, 
you know, what about the black market? You know, will it force a lot of what's been on the market underground? Yeah, actually, I believe that uh, uh, the uh, regulatory, you know, capability will be enhanced if the government uh, should uh, shut down the. Uh, uh, the farming and the, uh, the farming and the marketing of uh, the wildlife for you know for the exotic food market because if you shut it down, then you don't have that many you know uh, you know farms to go to to inspect. There will always be violators you know uh, under any uh, in any country uh, regarding any laws. But as long as the government can strengthen uh, law enforcement, go after the uh, the uh, lawbreakers, and I believe you know. Uh, the bank can be per permanent, but also one more thing uh, important to ensure uh, the uh, uh, compliance is that the government is obligated to help financially uh, the workers, the breeders, the traders to move to alternative lifestyle so that there will be less resistance. But of course I agree with uh, Professor Bay that uh, public education is highly important. Mm. And uh, Mr. Bai, I want to talk about this because um, this public education is really very important and sometimes the decisive factor. What do you think will be necessary to make those who have been curious about exotic meats to really understand the risk of it and the cost of it? Uh, well, that, that's it, it definitely a long process which takes a lot of time and takes a lot of education about the, uh, uh, over the general public. And uh, I think it takes uh, some of the experts to really spend their time uh, and uh, uh, we need to have uh, programs uh, to educate the public and we need to, to do this uh, at local level uh, um, and uh, it has to, we have to make sure that those education programs will be able to reach those people that have long thought, you know, because they, have, they do have trust in the Chinese traditional medicine but the Chinese traditional medicine does not necessarily have to, uh, you know, allow the people or encourage people to consume those uh, wild animals or the, particularly those uh, endangered animals or those animals that is, have been suspected to be able to transmit diseases. Uh, and uh, I, I think, uh, you know, previously we probably have not been financially possible to do that effectively. effectively. Hopefully in the future, mm. Uh, the government and different government agencies and uh, different sectors of the society will yeah. be able to kind of focus on this issue and uh, allocate sufficient yeah. and more fund and, okay. and, and you know, financial uh, facilities to okay. enable that to happen. Yeah, let's remember the pain after the scars possibly have already healed. Uh, once again, I want to emphasize at this moment we do not know, we do not have absolute evidence that uh, the virus has come from wild animal in that uh, market, but uh, uh, we are awaiting the investigation results by experts. Also, it's a huge effort to change the behavior of uh, a country of 1.4 billion people, but I think so long as we do it, it's possible. Many thanks to Peter Lee and to Bai, Mr. Bai from Tianjin. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of The Point with me. Thanks for watching. You've got the point.